Join medicinal chemist and In the Pipeline blogger Derek Lowe as he describes the major changes in the drug discovery process. I've been doing drug discovery since 1989 now, and here are some of the things that have changed over the years. First off, in disease pathology, there are fewer companies targeting the gigantic areas. More companies are targeting what would have been called orphan drugs. The competition is lower and the cost of sales and promotion are much lower. Target ID and validation, we've added several technologies along the way to help with that. SIRNA would be a prominent example. CRISPR is a gene editing technology that can be very useful for this. So molecular biology has provided us with a number of useful tools here that people didn't have 5, 10, 20 years ago. One of the big changes people have noted for assay development and screening is a shift just over the last few years towards more phenotypic assays. The only problem with phenotypic assays are you have to be very sure of your organism and your animal model. After the assay development screen, the changes that have come and hit to lead, companies have been all over the map on this. Some people have a dedicated group that does nothing but hit to lead. Others just have whichever chemists are ready to get on that work. The changes in lead up have been very small. We have a few more assays that we can run earlier in the process for tox, but the process of medicinal chemistry of SAR to me is pretty much like it was when I got into the industry and probably a lot like it was years before that. So that takes us next to preclinical development. The differences there are also small because you really have to be extremely cautious about making changes here. You're in a regulatory environment by this point. Any changes you want to make in your toxicology testing are going to be a subject for you to talk about with the FDA. And finally, the clinic. The main difference there is that more people are thinking about doing Bayesian type trials. The big problem though is that as we've gotten better at pharmacokinetics, the clinical failures aren't happening early in the phase one, two, three cycle. They're being pushed gradually later and later. Join us live every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for the best and brightest minds in chemistry.